Hey y'all, I'm DJ, and it's been a long time since I made a video, and I apologize for that. Life's been really busy and everything's been very hectic. I wasn't intending to make a video this weekend, but something came up, and I realized that if I didn't capture this on film, I'd probably lose the opportunity to share this with you for a while, so I went ahead and filmed it while I was doing it. Um, about a week ago, there was a major power outage in my neighborhood. Now, I have everything that I need to keep running is on UPS, so I have a nice controlled shutdown. Um, but some of these things that, that happen to our power supplies don't need a power outage or a power spike or anything like that to, to be a problem. If you just run it long enough, it might stay continuously running, but then not start the next time that you need to turn it on. Uh, and that's the case with the RMAC number three node that you'll see in a minute. The other one is that when they were fixing the temporary patch that they did on the electrical system um, today, I did the shutdown on the BBS, and the BBS machine decided that it didn't want to restart either. And uh, if you left the switch on for long enough, it would start up, but then it wouldn't be stable. Um, so I uh, took them both apart and uh, investigated, changed the part that I suspected was the number one culprit for the issue, given the number of symptoms that it was showing, and I was correct in both cases. Um, the part that I replaced was a less than 29 cents capacitor, um, and it was the same capacitor in both of them. If you turn it on and it does nothing, it's probably that capacitor. If you turn it on and it goes click, 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 it's probably a half dozen or so capacitors in the output section. Typically, those are the two failures that I see in the Apple II Aztec power supplies. The Dynacomp power supplies, I don't know, I haven't played around with them very much. I don't find them to be as hardy as the Aztec systems. So I use the Aztec power supplies almost exclusively. Uh, if anybody wants a Dynacomp power supply, I probably have a couple I can give you. Um, and I would gladly take an Aztec power supply and trade. So let's uh, roll up our sleeves and dive in on that and just have a quick look at what I had to do in order to fix, well, diagnose and fix the problem in these two machines. Uh, this machine is RMAC node number three. It serves up to five users on the modems. Uh, the other cards, this one uh, boots off of the ROM. Uh, this one is the parallel networking card. Let's... Uh... Also, I've taken the liberty of already taking all of the case screws out of this. And we can see here... This is kind of a dirty looking power supply. It says it works. Um, let's see. Ah, yes, I have some notes over here. It uh, passed a stress test on 7-21-16 at K-Fest 2016, which probably means that I got this out of the garage giveaway at K-Fest. Um, since it passed a stress test, which means that I put it on a load and it continues uh, running on that load for a period of time, say 24 or 48 hours, um, with all the voltages in spec. So that was not recording. <laughs> um, all I did was tear this down and uh, generally speaking, it's going to be a capacitor issue. Um, sure, one of these diodes could have a problem, or, you know, a resistor could go out of spec. Maybe this transistor stops working right. Um, but quite typically, it's because these older capacitors end up going out of spec. Okay, so here is this. So here's the capacitor that we just pulled out. Let's uh, take a look at it on the peak meter. Look at that. It says that it is either in circuit or it's leaky. Well, it's not in circuit. There's only one other option. Let's give it another test just to be sure. Nope, it says in circuit and leaky. ESR is greater than 40 ohms. That's a bad capacitor. 
This is a good capacitor. <laughs> Okay, so next thing I want to do is see if the power supply will start. Make sure the switch is off, I guess. This isn't a definitive test, but if it doesn't go squeak, 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 it's probably running. And it went sweet, which is what I would expect for one that just learned how to turn itself on for the first time, which this one used to not do. Da, 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 before replacing in circuit leaky capacitor. I already know it's going to work because the power light blipped. You probably saw the power light blip. It's on. You heard it beep. Previously, this power supply would not turn on because that capacitor was dead. The cost of that capacitor is 29 cents. And this is the BBS machine. Uh, let's see. Nothing particularly special going on with this machine. I do have uh, the little backpack module here for a uh, local talk card, but that card is not installed. Uh, most special thing about this card, I suppose, or this system is the three and a half inch disc controller, uh, which I had installed in slot four. For some reason. Um, this one, so I shut it down before the power outage because I've got UPSs on everything. So I did a nice clean shutdown on this. And whenever I turned it back on, it doesn't come back on. Now, if I let it sit here for a while, it will turn back on. But it doesn't run reliably. So, let's tear it down and find out why. Okay, so here's our 10 volt 220 capacitor. Let's see what the Peak Atlas ESR Plus says about this. Uh, In circuit leaky. Well, just a good thing that I've got a stash full of those over here. Connect up test here before I get too invested in putting this all back together. I'm confident this is what the issue is, but it's caused me to be wrong before. And boom, it just comes right on. There's no more of the not coming on. <laughs> and it certainly is on immediately. So, there you have it. I'll just give it one more check before I throw the lid back on. Look at that. Of course, part of why it's not beeping is because the keyboard is not hooked up. So one on, on an Apple IIe, whenever the keyboard's not hooked up, it goes into diagnostic mode. Um, and now that the keyboard's plugged back in, 
Beep. Alright. Good to go. And that's that. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? Just one capacitor. Uh, it's the smallest capacitor. It's the only electrolytic capacitor that's off by itself on the whole board. And uh, if you turn on the power and absolutely nothing happens, it's probably that capacitor. And you can look it up. 10 volt, 220 microfarad electrolytic. How much does that cost? So if you don't want to mess with it, I don't blame you for changing it out for an aftermarket power supply, but please do hold on to your original power supply, even if it's just the bare board, because somebody can fix it for you, and you're going to need it again someday. <laughs> Until next time, y'all take care. Bye.